Okay, before we go, does anyone need to use the bathroom? Nope. Are you sure? Mm-hmm. You're sure you're sure? Yep. There are some things in life you can't trust. Uh, mommy? Oh, come on. And there are some things you can, like the HP Smart Tank printer. With up to two years of ink included and outstanding print quality, you can always rely on the HP Smart Tank. From HP, America's most trusted printer brand. Available at Amazon. Set summer in motion with the most electrifying Honda vehicles yet. Like the CRV in and Accord. With available hybrid powertrains designed to deliver more thrilling performance and more innovative tech. Summer's here. Make every adventure more electrifying with Honda. For a limited time, well qualified buyers can get a 3.9% APR on a 2023 Honda Accord Hybrid or 2023 CRV Hybrid. Buy online, reserve from select dealers, or visit your local Honda dealer today. See dealer for financing details. Hello, from Wonder Media Network, I'm Jenny Kaplan, and this is Womanica. This month, we're talking about adventurers, women who refuse to be confined. They push the boundaries of where a woman could go and how she could get there. Today's Womanikin is known as the first solo female travel writer. At a time when women were not encouraged to strike out on their own, she traveled through Asia, the Middle East, Africa, and the Americas. She even circumnavigated the world twice. Please welcome Ida Pfeiffer. Ida was born in Vienna on October 14, 1797. Her adventurous spirit developed early, traveling to Egypt and Palestine when she was just five years old. Ida was a precocious tomboy who often wore boys' clothes, and despite gender standards of the time, her father allowed Ida to receive the same education as her brothers. Ida's mother did not hold the same beliefs. When Ida's father died in 1806, Ida's mother insisted Ida learn the things that were more proper for a young lady, like playing the piano and knitting. As a teenager, Ida fell in love with her tutor, who showed her books about travel. But Ida's mom thought he was financially unsuitable and banned him from their home. Ida was heartbroken. A few years later, Ida was married off against her wishes to a more suitable man who was 24 years her senior. Dr. Mark Pfeiffer. Dr. Pfeiffer was a widower with a son from his previous marriage. He and Ida had two more children of their own. During their marriage, Dr. Pfeiffer's career suffered and he was unable to find work. Ida taught music and drawing to help, but the family lived in poverty. In 1838, Dr. Pfeiffer passed away. Ida's children were adults and living on their own. Now, in her early 40s and on her own, Ida was looking for a new, more adventurous way to spend her time. She thought back to her travels as a child and the books her tutor showed her all those years ago. She decided to travel the world alone. Traveling alone as a woman was unheard of, but if Ida was traveling for reasons of piety, it was more socially acceptable. So Ida decided to visit the Holy Land. During her journey, Ida planned to see Constantinople, Jerusalem, Beirut, and Damascus. Then she would set sail for Egypt, visiting Alexandria, Cairo, and the Red Sea along the way. She'd return home by way of Italy, stopping in Sicily, Naples, Rome, and Florence. A packed itinerary during a time without planes or affordable trains. She would have to make her journey using mules, ox carts, ships, post carriages, and her own two feet. On March 22, 1842, Ida set off. At every turn, people were shocked to see a woman traveling alone. Once, she was traveling to a remote monastery with a group of other travelers. The monastery's gates were open to visitors, but once they saw Ida was a woman, they slammed the gates in her face. They eventually allowed her to stay, though it was in a room at the top of a separate tower that she could only access by ladder. At night, they took the ladder away, essentially imprisoning her. Ida's appetite for adventure was unwavering through any setbacks. When Ida was invited to see some ancient ruins on horseback, she excitedly agreed, despite never having ridden a horse before. 
She rode at the back of the pack so no one else would notice her wobbly horseback riding skills. Because Ida was not a rich woman, she took few comforts while traveling. She often slept on the floor or in churches. Her priority was always to see and explore more. After nine months, she returned home to Vienna. Ida kept journals during her travels, and she used those entries to publish books that helped fund her next expeditions. In 1843, she published her first book, Journey of a Viennese Lady to the Holy Land. Ida's perspective as a middle-aged woman from modest means was utterly unique for travel literature at the time. She infused that perspective into her writing. The book was a hit. It's worth noting that while Ida is often known as the first female solo traveler, that concept is based in Eurocentrism. Traveling alone in this era usually meant traveling without the accompaniment of other white Europeans. If someone traveled with a local guide or local interpreters, they were still considered to be traveling solo. In the spring of 1845, Ida took another trip, this time heading north to Copenhagen in Iceland. She explored springs and volcanoes before returning to Vienna six months later. The following year, she published The Journey to the Scandinavian North. The year after that, Ida set sail west on her first journey around the world. The trip was harrowing. Ida fended off an attack from armed robbers in Brazil. She met the Queen of Tahiti, went tiger hunting in India, was temporarily kidnapped in Russia, traversed the desert on camelback, and explored the ruins of Babylon. The trip took more than two years. Back in Vienna, Ida published a three-volume collection called A Woman's Journey Round the World. Now 54 years old, Ida felt it was time to retire. But it didn't take long before she got the urge to travel more. So Ida set off to circumnavigate the world again, this time heading east. Over the subsequent two years, she added more thrilling adventures to her resume and collected plants, insects, and mineral specimens that she sold to scientists back in Vienna. Her travels were captured in another book titled My Second Journey Around the World. In 1856, Ida embarked on her last journey, and this one was as exciting as the rest. She chose Madagascar as her destination. She stopped in South Africa on her way, where she met a Frenchman involved in a plan to overthrow the Queen of Madagascar. Ida accidentally got wrapped up in the plot. When the Queen caught word of the potential coup, she expelled the perpetrators, including Ida, from the country. On her way back home, Ida contracted malaria. She never fully recovered. Ida passed away on October 27, 1858. She was 61 years old. Having spent all her savings traveling the world, Ida left behind just enough money for a modest funeral. Over the course of her explorations, Ida traveled an estimated 20,000 miles by land and 150,000 miles by sea. Her travel books were translated into seven languages. Her final book, The Journey to Madagascar, was published posthumously by her son. All month, we're talking about adventurers. For more information, find us on Facebook and Instagram at Womanica Podcast. Special thanks to Liz Kaplan, my favorite sister and co-creator. Talk to you tomorrow. Okay, before we go, does anyone need to use the bathroom? Nope. Are you sure? Mm Mm-hmm. You're sure you're sure? Yep. There are some things in life you can't trust. Uh, mommy? Oh, come on. And there are some things you can, like the HP Smart Tank printer. With up to two years of ink included and outstanding print quality, you can always rely on the HP Smart Tank. From HP, America's most trusted printer brand. Available at Amazon. In the 70s, the warehouse took over Chicago nightlife, and the club's DJ would go on to make history. Frankie made sure that you felt it in your soul. Learn more about the rise of house music on the history of the world's greatest nightclubs, a 12-part podcast about the iconic venues and people that revolutionized 
how we party. Listen to the history of the world's greatest nightclubs on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Diamond for diamond, no one compares with Mervis. At Mervis Diamond Importers, our natural diamonds come straight from the mines in Africa, and our mermaid lab-grown diamonds beat all others for quality and value. Come view our brilliant diamonds, both natural and lab-grown. Mervis diamonds are so bright and full of fire, they will blow you away. So will the affordable prices. Our diamonds may steal your heart, but not your wallet. See our mermaid lab-grown diamonds and learn how to get a larger diamond for less. You can get a bigger mermaid lab-grown diamonds than you ever thought possible. And with Mervis Financing, you can enjoy up to five years to pay with zero interest. A generous full-value trader policy and our lifetime warranty program easily make Mervis your first choice. When you mount a world-class Mervis diamond into a designer ring from our huge collection, there is no equal. Mervis Diamond Importers. For an appointment, call 800-HER-LOVE or go to mervisdiamond.com. Again, that's 800-HER-LOVE or go to mervisdiamond.com.